Hi guys, I'm Ruth from Beltane Gifts and welcome to the Crafting Shed. Please excuse the, uh, the state of the place at the moment. This is my workshop and I can't get into the shop at the minute and to the shares, so I'm here keeping safe during lockdown. I hope you guys at home are all safe and well and just staying isolated. Now, last time we had a go at making one of these, which is a felted ball. If you haven't watched that, just go back and watch that one first because that's just going to show you some of the real basics and about the tools. I have got some links just below here which can link you to the website where there is just some basic information on needle felting. Feel free to have a read through that if you haven't already. Today we're going to change that into one of these which is a felted heart. Now all of these basic videos that I'm doing now all work around one of these felted balls so definitely go back, have a go at making one of these, have a few of them handy and then you can follow through and copy to make some of these felted shapes. As with last time, you're going to need some basic materials to do this. So you're going to need your felted ball. Make it kind of squishy like a marshmallow. It's a great thickness for your felted ball. It means that it's evenly felted and holds together but still has a bit of give so that you can shape it again. You're also going to need your felting bag. I'm using a bag of rice again. Your felting needles. When you're shaping, you probably won't need your red felting needle, which for me is the largest and thickest needle. Um, you probably will need your medium and your fine needles, so for me that's the yellow and green needle. If you see those in the videos being used, that's what they are. And also, I always recommend your felting finger protectors. Keep those fingers safe, guys. Um, if you do stab yourself with the felting needle, it does hurt. So, there you go. Finger protectors on the hand that's holding your work, not on the hand that's stabbing. You've got your tools ready, that's the finger protectors, felting pad and felting needles. You'll also need a pre-felted ball, I'm just putting on the finger protectors there. I'm right handed so they're going on my left hand on the index finger and the thumb. And the needle today that I'm choosing is going to be the medium length, medium thickness, generic needle. Now you need to stab along the top of the ball in a straight line and to do that on a ball you'll need to slightly curve it so always try and get the point of your needle stabbing towards the centre of the ball that will give you a nice firm felted line. You need to stab quite close together and quite often this gives you a more defined line. Now this is creating the gap in between the two top hemispheres of the heart. To define that further what we're going to do is we're going to stab into it so onto the left hand side of the line and we're stabbing towards the left and what this does is it catches those fibres and it just pushes them towards the left which just increases the gap between those two rounded sections at the top of the heart. Now these stabs don't need to be quite as close together, they do need to be reasonably deep so we're stabbing towards the middle, uh, sorry, the middle of the ball and what this does is it just catches lots of fibres and just connects them together. The ball we're using is quite well felted, it's still got a bit of give so about the squishiness of a marshmallow and that gives us time to move things how we want them. If the ball we were using was too densely felted we just wouldn't have the, the movement in the fibres to be able to create the shape we want. So I'm doing the same here again and what I've done is I've rotated the ball rather than stabbing from the other side. I find this gives me more control and I can actually see what I'm doing better this way. So once you've got a larger gap there, don't worry if it's not perfect, what we're going to do now is we're going to start flattening the heart because we want it to have a front and a back rather than staying in that pure ball shape. So if you watch I'm just stabbing just randomly over the top, just bringing the fibres down and I'm just paying extra attention just to the base of the heart because the base or the point of the heart is going to be a lot narrower than the top section is so we just stab a bit more down there. Again we're just redefining that line you'll find as you work with the the ball and as you go over things that the the lines that you do will get pushed out as you're stabbing from different directions it's just because the fibre needs to go somewhere and until it's firmly felted together it will just alter the shape as you go so don't be afraid to just go back over the things that you've done before the lines you've created now I'm using that line that I did earlier and working my way down the point of the to the point of the heart and to define that point what we need to do is we need to stab in the sides and bring those in more 
The way that I do that is to keep the needle as I'm stabbing at a 45 degree angle to where I want the line to be. Um, if you wanted a flat surface you would stab straight down at a 90 degree angle but the 45 degree angle gives you more of a cone shape which is what we want for the base of this heart. Now again remember to rotate the shape rather than trying to stab from behind or the other side and we want to bring both of the sides in evenly so that we have a nice well shaped curved point to the heart. So keep rotating as needed and stabbing in at that 45 degree angle and again if you see me stabbing in other places it's just because the fibres as I'm doing this part of the shaping um, are pushing out in other areas that just need to be controlled and with this I'm not just doing the front and the back I'm rotating and doing the sides as well because we want this to be nice and curved so it's going up into a cone shape and nice point rather than just having two flat sides on the front and the back now this video has been sped up so please don't try and keep up with it this is just to show you how it develops as you go along if you go at your own pace and just keep doing the same technique as been describing then you'll be able to form this in your own time and create that shape that you're after as you're working you may start to notice that certain areas are sticking up more than others now these are the areas that you want to spend particular time on take it slowly just pinpoint the bits that are sticking up and just give those a stab you may also start to notice that you've got areas that are like little valleys in the fibre that you're working with that's because you've stabbed them more than other areas and they're just deeper now we want everything to be nice and smooth and to get that everything needs to be at the same level and to achieve that you need to stab on the bits that stick out more and avoid the areas that have already been stabbed too much so anything that sticks out at this point just aim for it don't worry too much again though because we are using quite a big needle at this point which is going to leave divots to get rid of those we'll have to move down to a finer needle and go over the whole area stabbing quite close together just to give that smooth effect at this point still we're still just trying to create the basic shape so it doesn't matter too much about things sticking up although you can see, see here I'm just going over an area that's much much higher than the other surrounding areas just giving it a few stabs just to take it in and you also notice that as I work I'm moving my needle around because I want these edges to be curved so the point of the needle should always be aiming towards the center of your project in this case I want the edges to be round so I'm imagining that there's a line through the centre and the point of the needle will always be pointing towards that as I stab. And what I'm doing here is I'm still stabbing quite deeply because the stabs that I'm doing are structural so I'm changing the main shape. What I'm going to move into though is to do more of a an surface felting so for that I'm not stabbing quite as deeply and I'm working over the same area repeatedly so you can see here I'm working backwards and forwards over the shape the more you focus on an area and more you bring the fibers together so the more you shape it uh, the deeper you stab the more defined those stabs are and with this big needle it does make a big difference if you're stabbing quite hard and deep once you get the basic shape down though you need to start being a little bit more delicate with your stabs we don't want to change the structure of it too much and here I'm just speeding up again I'm just going over the area but not stabbing quite as deeply you will start to notice though that the edges of the the heart are going to start moving in with each stab and that's because the needles doing its job everything's becoming quite well felted and the needles having trouble getting into the same fiber that it was before just because the gaps aren't as big now I'm just going over and redefining the shapes and here you notice there's quite a difference as I stab and that's because these fibers are just slightly fluffier than the ones before again I'm working over the whole area in kind of a rounded shape backwards and forwards to bring those fibers in it's the same technique you've used before just going over and over the shape it does take a bit more time to do it this way gradually but you will get a better and more defined shape afterwards if you just had a very hard stab in one area and brought it all in you'd end up with a very tightly felted but misshapen finished heart and that's not what we want so notice here the stabs aren't quite as deep I'm not leaving as much of a difference although you can see the edges start to be pushed in and that's because of the size of the needle you can also see that there's some bits sticking up more than others those are the bits that I need to aim for 
and also that you can start to see that the the holes where I've been stabbing are standing out more and again that's just because it's a big needle what we're going to have to do soon is just change over to the finer needle for the finishing off but first off just stab over it you'll start to feel the difference between areas that are well felted and areas that aren't if you're having trouble feeling that with the needle you can always squeeze it with your fingers just to get a sense of how the felting's going you'll notice that there's a difference in texture the fluffier the area the easier it is to squish between your finger and thumb so again I'm going over that central line once more just because those areas have been pushed out with all the other work that we've done okay, so again areas that are sticking out just aim for those take it slowly this is really sped up just feeling there just having a feel over the edges just to see which bits need to change now, this is something quite handy to do is feeling your work as you go along it gets to the stage where it's almost like clay where you can actually start molding it into the shapes and then go over it just to hold those shapes into place and I've just swapped over to my finer needle that's because I was leaving two bigger divots now you can see that this needle is going in a lot easier so just a few tentative stabs first just to check that it's still felting enough and then start to speed up you'll notice that these stabs are closer together now that brings everything in it gives it that smoother finish and you also see that certain areas are moving in more than others as I stab now the reason for that is because certain areas are felted more than others you'll find if you've got a looser felted area when you stab it it will go in more than a firmer felted area so go gradually just work over the surface just see which bits need to be stabbed and you'll have to just change how deep you stab how hard you stab just as you go just to work out how effective that that needle is going to be now you'll also find that the quicker you stab the less fibers you catch the slower you stab the more you st catch so although it seems counterproductive to do less stabs and do them slower you will sometimes find that by doing that you're actually changing the whole shape and you're changing the the structure of the piece that you're felting rather than just stabbing the surface I'm just going over the whole thing just catching areas that really need it and you see that there's less divots formed here and that the sides aren't moving quite as much and again that is because of the style of needle that I'm using it's the shortest and finest needle there with the green handle I'm just going over that central line again because once more you'll find that as you've stabbed the central line will disappear a little bit so areas that you want to be really defined you just keep going over repeatedly just as you go along and that maintains that shape you could leave it to the end to create it but I find that if you do it bit by bit you get a more evenly felted piece which is what we really want Now these are quite firm deep stabs I'm doing here that's because I want to just change the whole structure at the top and just to define it a bit more and to get that rounded shape that I want and you can really see that the felt is being shoved in there and again I'm working in that line going backwards and forwards I find for myself that if I go over a small area at a time and really define that area and then work out from it that it gives me that finish that I'm after um, it's personal taste and you'll find your own way the more you practice you'll get your own style of felting but this one for me seems to work now these stabs here a little bit less structural they're a little bit lighter and you just go over the whole area again looking for those areas that stick out more than others and just to stab them in you'll find over time that you get used to what pressure you need to give how quickly you need to felt I would recommend taking it just that little bit slower just erring on the side of caution just until you learn fully what you're capable of and what your needles are capable of I have mentioned before but sometimes you will find the perfect needle which will work for doing the really fine work as well as the really coarse work and bringing in the the fibers at the beginning if you ever do find that needle put it somewhere safe and keep it for as long as you can because you'll find that it, it can do amazing work and you don't have to keep swapping back and forth between needles it's strange how even the gauge needles you can find your favorite needle amongst them
You might also note that there's a difference between the two different shots. I've got different lighting for each slightly, just because the light's coming from above. From above, the surface looks a lot smoother than it does from the side. Now, I was viewing it from the side, so for me, I could see a lot more of the indents. So what I would definitely re recommend is every now and then just taking a moment, just rotating your work, just so you can catch it from different angles and different lighting, just to look for those bits that are sticking out that you really need to aim for. That's if you want to get a nice, very smooth effect to your piece. Some people prefer to go a little bit more rustic and to have more bumps and lumps and fibres, and that can look amazing too. For this project, I just wanted personally to have it a lot smoother. What I would recommend is if you are going to go for something a little bit more rustic, just make sure that the original ball that you're working from is quite firmly felted before you start, a little bit firmer than we've been using, just so that everything holds together that little bit more. Just because you will find over time, if you've got... Um, your piece in a room that's slightly damp it will start to expand slightly and you can end up with things getting very fluffy so just make sure everything's firmly felted enough that it will hold its shape now for me this is probably felted about enough for what we're doing now which is just a demonstration if you wanted to you could carry on felting go over the whole thing just bring it in a bit more and just smooth out that surface you can also rub over the surface of your heart with your thumb just to remove any tiny little holes that are showing and just even out the fibers it's completely up to you and it's only done when you're happy with it so feel free to keep going you can add more fiber if you need to or if not just keep going with what you've got just the last few touch-ups really defining that central line there in between the two parts of the heart and there you go